all right hello and welcome to this build guide for the hammered in the hammered in is an iconic build from all the way back since so what diablo 2 uh that became very popular 20 plus years ago is it now and still popular today and uh, last epoch is no different as far as having a build that fits that play style this this build actually is very uh true i would say to form for the most part at least to the uh the old school hammered in it is of course a paladin and it throws hammers in a spiral so yeah it's going to look very similar to it if you played a lot of diablo 2 back in the day and you have a love for that build you can play it again in a new game and get hopefully a similar sense of nostalgia all right let's go ahead and get through this we are using by the way the max roll uh guide here this is a companion video i guess you could say for that guide so uh, if you want to check out all the written information, go back and look at all the detail. It's all there for you. Please, please do check it out and use that as you are working your way through this guide to make sure that you are on the mark and all the different metrics that you need to be. Okay, starting with kind of how this build operates. Like we said, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a spiral with hammers and it's a paladin. So if you, do, if you know Diablo 2, you kind of know what you're getting into here. It's a very fun build. It will uh, throw spirals, hammers spiral all over the battlefield and uh, do lots of damage. It has great clear. It has really, really good single target damage. It is a very, well, relatively easy build to play. It is probably, a, I actually don't know about Diablo 2 as far as how hard it was to play a hammer did. My understanding was pretty straightforward. This one's a little bit less straightforward because it does use some, you know, some skills that don't exist in Diablo 2, but it's still not a very difficult build to play. It is, uh, it is pretty new player friendly as far as gearing goes for the most part. And if you have a Bleeding Heart, it is actually a very good uh, league starter, so to speak. Uh, the Bleeding Heart is really the only thing that keeps you from really being able to push this kind of like in the mid game. If you don't have a Bleeding Heart, you won't have the Blessing for Leech, so your sustain will be really bad. But if you can get yourself a Bleeding Heart, you can absolutely start with this. And... Um, by start by end game start if you can get one early in the in the campaign which they are common early drops so they that definitely can happen then you can go ahead and play this into the end game all right let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons and then we'll get into all the different aspects of this build so first off it has very good clear uh, you, you throw spirals spiraling hammers around they hit lots of things you can keep moving while your hammers are spiraling over the place and uh it uh it, it does a great job it's also pretty tanky overall you have the the shield bastion of honor if you've if you've gotten it that will give you a guaranteed block which is which is excellent it's got good armor it's got good health it's pretty solid on the tanky side it's of course an iconic play style so for those of you who love d2 and love the nostalgia of it this is definitely for you and it's got great single target damage actually a very very good single target damage better than i expected when i first went out to make this um, mostly because it can shotgun three hammers at once and hit with the same hammer multiple times as far as the downsides it does have mana management you need to be careful not to go too negative with it because of some of the skills that we use do have a mana cost but we do have ways of getting the mana back so it's not too bad but it is there you can go negative and that will affect your rotation it does need gear to crit cap it doesn't need to crit cap i like guess fine if it doesn't but of course the most damage comes when it's crit capped so we generally want to do that um, and you'll require two items to, to ever get there as far as base crit goes and then a bunch of increased crit it has heavy buff management because it uses sigil of hope and it uses vault reversal which is true of most of my sentinel builds i think most of the max Roll sentinel builds because they're just so freaking good and there's nothing else that compares so they get used in almost everything uh, it's also vulnerable to dot damage this is a general sentinel issue it's not as bad this patch because of some changes to sigils of hope they gave more endurance threshold but compared to some other builds sentinels are generally fairly vulnerable to dot damage and since this one does kind of stand a little bit in place sometimes you can have bad things happen if you're not paying attention all right on to the skills and the passives that we use for this build of course hammer throw is the the big star of the, uh, the build you can see here we're throwing out the spirals and we're setting this up for of course spirals with maximum hammers we're getting three hammers every cast and then we're pushing the damage through multipliers like weighted hammers uh, through zealot's conviction which is effectively a, a double damage multiplier when it's combined with steadfast path which it has to be 
uh, even force of impacts adding some some damage once you get deep into this and then we're also making sure that we have zero mana cost so that we can consistently use this without worrying about uh, running out of mana and not being able to use our ability the next skill we're going to talk about is sigils of hope this is one of those two that's used on just about every sentinel build right now although they are used a little bit differently uh, in different builds so the first thing that we're going to generally do with this build is we're going to take last wish to get the summon on kill or something it doesn't have to be the first but oftentimes players will do that just to make sure that they don't have to cast this all of the time because it is kind of a pain to cast we're also going to get a ton of uh, increased damage from empowering sigils from sigils of hope's base additional fire damage and decree of flame by the way this is a fizz crit build so you might be like well why are you taking fire damage stuff and the reason is because we don't really have many increased physical damage um stats in this build are almost all generic or throwing uh including on hammer throw there's no like more physical damage it's always more damage and so this basically scales just as well as fizz does even though we are primarily working a fizz build here because of the fizz tag on hammer throw we're also going to take iron sigils this is a really good new node that has replaced uh, an armor node that gives us a lot of endurance threshold about 50 percent more at 3000 health if you don't invest anything else into endurance threshold than you have baseline and we're going to take enduring hope and tetragram to get more sigils for longer uh, at the end we'll take world of alacrity just to get a better cast speed this is just a nice little um quality of life thing if you don't have bastion of honor you can not take decree of flame and either take one point out of empowering sigils or one out of word of alacrity to cap sign of the guardian i do recommend doing this so that you have more tankiness once you have bastion this is not as important let's actually skip smite for a second come back to that we're going to talk about uh volatile reversal actually start with holy aura it's just i think it's a little more natural progression holy aura is a paladin only that basically on its own makes paladin well that and one other passive node makes paladin superior to forge guard for a fizz crit throwing build which is a little unfortunate because forge guard seems thematically meant for it but this is just the way the game is right now so uh holy aura will give us uh 48 plus 30 increased damage just just for existing on our bar uh 78 uh, increased throwing attack damage right there F uh, for almost almost 50 percent uh, throwing attack stun chance it's going to give us another 18 percent throwing attack speed which is 36 percent when activated and then also nine percent chance to give us haste haste is an awesome stat that you want to get whenever you can somewhere on your build we're also getting another 50 percent physical damage so i should actually add that up and this is the one exception i think in the entire build that doesn't uh, apply to the fire damage but it's a pretty small amount so it's not not that important uh so we get 50 uh 80 almost like 100 140 ish something like that 140 ish increased damage just from holy or alone and then the uh the attack speed on top of that we get 15 elemental resistance and another 25 so that's 40 elemental resistance and 15 percent endurance so this is just an absolute crazy good skill that requires almost no usage you can use it on cooldown if you want to but uh, it actually gives most of these buffs passively and if you find yourself not having cleanse or needing more poison res you can also take a few points out of call to arms um, you can take three points out and then go up here and get purification if you'd like all right now let's go into the other two ones we'll start with vault reversal vault reversal is a damage multiplier effectively because it's going to give us increased damage taken to the enemy it's 30 percent for each void rift there are two void rifts that can go out one when you start and one where you end up so that'll be 60% increased damage taken just from this uh, alone. And it can also help us to get back the mana from Sigils of Hope casts, which will be important, especially at the beginning and throughout as you're trying to refresh those to make sure that you're not running out of mana. This is just an absolutely great skill that's not necessarily great quality of life because you do need to get used to the fact that it's going to push you backwards in time. We do have this set to the minimum, only two seconds, so it won't do it uh, as long as some other builds will, but you'll still have to basically count two seconds um, to make sure that you're staying in place uh, if you want to. And if you're on a boss or a tanky enemy, you do want to hit them with both of the rifts, so you do want to do that. All right, the last skill that we have here is Smite. Smite is being is not on our bar. It's being procced from an idol. We'll talk about that later. And what Smite is doing for us primarily is giving us attack speed. It's giving us 20% attack speed, but it's also giving us some heals. If uh, if we get hit by the Smite, the Smite's going to hit the enemy. But it's got a an AoE for the heal around it. You can kind of see that circle that goes out. That's for the heal. And it will also give us some mana regen and some cleanse chance when it does that. This is not a um, necessary 
skill to have it's optimized this is going to be your your best approach but if you're finding if you don't have a the idol that you need or you're finding that your mana is kind of lacking if you're not you don't have enough regen on your build to manage it or you haven't gotten a, an efficient rotation yet you can swap this out for shield rush and make sure you pick up uh rush mastery there's i think six points you can put in that so it's like 120 percent man efficiency and that'll help significantly because we're going to use shield rush as our movement ability okay let's now talk about the passives the passives are fairly straightforward they're pretty well similar to what other paladin builds look like in master Roll because these are just really this is a very efficient approach uh armor clad for damage reduction we're also going to go with juggernaut abyssal endurance holy symbol defiance to take care of our resistances when we need to you can change these around as you as you do need if you find yourself over captain somewhere and you want to put points elsewhere you can do that uh, at least one point in gladiator steel ages honor and shield wall which will give us a bunch of block chance yes we do get 100 percent block chance with bastion but that's only towards four enemies within four yards that, that will not affect ranged enemies that are not close to us so this gives us another five uh seven nine twelve percent block chance for four points of investment it's a great uh it's just a it's great deal it's great value there uh we're going to take reverence of duality of course for sure because it's just a ton of great stats and then our final points we can invest in a number of different places depending on our needs i i have preferred weapons master in here because it's just both EHP and damage, the combination balance there is just really, really good. But Light of Rhea and uh, um, Prayer Agent. In fact, I don't take Light of Rhea. I need to take that one out there. That's only going to provide move speed on this particular build. It is not going to provide um, any damage. So ignore that, and I will get that adjusted and get it out. But Prayer Agent is still a good choice to take. Okay, let's go on to the rotation and gameplay. So, of course, our goal here is to spam hammers. We want as many hammers as possible on the battlefield hitting the enemies. The general rotation is going to be cast your four sizzle to hope for their buffs and then immediately use vault reversal to recover all of the mana that was lost. This is how you're going to be able to maintain enough mana without investing too heavily into mana regen. After that, you can start spamming hammer throw at enemies. The closer you stand, the more will generally hit, so that will maximize the damage, so stand close if you can handle it. Use unspec shield rush or lunge to move across the map. Cast vault or reverse on holy aura when you're on top of enemies for their buffs and extra damage. Remember to count for two seconds for vault reversal before using it so that you get both on it and you're not pushed backwards. And then maintain your four sizzles of hope at all times. For mapping, it's gonna look very similar to the general rotation. We're just gonna rush to the objective. We're gonna proc haste when we can to get the one second buff. And if you can time it right and get the buff and then shield rush, shield rush will get the extra movement speed. So it'll make you even faster. Uh, try to backtrack when using vault reversal just for speed reasons, efficiency purposes. Uh, group mobs up before using vault reversal and holy aura to maximize your benefits. And then for larger groups, use hammer throw while, st while staying on the move to maximize clear and reduce incoming damage. If you've got a bunch of enemies, they're gonna be a bunch of telegraphed attacks and a bunch of dots on the ground. So don't stand in one place but you don't have to with hammer throw you can you can cast you can then move cast move cast move and you will do plenty of damage that way for bossing we're going to take advantage of all our defensive buffs and keep them active we're going to actively use holy aura to double the effects of our buffs we're going to use vault to reversal ramp up damage and then spam hammer throws again two seconds then cast vault to reversal get 60 percent increased damage stay as close to the boss you can to maximize damage and potential for multiple hits from the same hammer of course don't stand there and take damage that you don't need to take but uh, when you have windows get really close and then on the larger bosses it's going to do a ton of damage because they're going to actually get hit multiple times so it's great uh, keep on spec shield rush up cooldown for emergency situations or telegraphed boss attacks the advanced stuff i think we mostly talked about here oh one thing we didn't talk about when you're standing close you'll also get smite procs to hit you and heal you and give you mana regen and cleanse so that will offset some of the damage you can take from standing close all right on to gear blessings and idols your stat goals for this build are capped resistances, capped crit avoidance, capped endurance, 3,000 to 4,000 plus health, 50 to 60% armor mitigation pre buffs, 2,000 plus block effectiveness, 50 to 100% block chance, 100 being with Bastion of Honor, 250% plus crit multi, 110 plus throwing damage, and 100% plus throwing attack speed. For starting gear, you should have bleeding heart before you start you're really going to want that if you don't have it you have almost no sustain 
Uh, and so it's, it's going to be really hard for you to recover from damage. So make sure you have, it doesn't even need to be a good one. Just make sure you have a bleeding heart of some sort before you start this build. As far as your early um, things that you're looking for, you're looking for throwing damage uh, and mi minus throwing attack mana cost to get your cost of hammer throw down to zero. That's one of the really big things you want in here. Of course, you want plus hammer throw if you can get it. Uh, a decent shield if you can get an iron glass shield with block chance block effect. That's great. And then you're looking at your resistances and your health. That's your primary goal here. Before you get to empowered, you want capped resistances. You want at least 2,000 health if you can or close to it. And if you can get crit avoidance, you want it. If you're playing hardcore, you definitely want crit avoidance before you get into empowered. If you're playing softcore, you have a lot more leeway with crit avoidance because you can die and it's not the end of the world. Um, as far as idols go, this is going to be true throughout. You're looking for one adorned Rhea idol with chance to cast smite when you hit with throwing attacks. The higher, the better. It goes up to 9%. And if you can get block effectives or health, that's great. We're going to get some more idols uh, going here in a minute. But that one is going to just allow you to use smite without that. You can't use smite. It won't work. So you're going to be stuck with shield throw on your bar, which isn't the end of the world. But you're missing out on some damage and some healing and some regen and stuff. Once you get to the advanced gear, things look very similar. We're just pushing our gear up to try to get to tier 20s before we get to exalts. Obviously, if you get an exalt, take that, but you know, this is like the next step. If you don't have one, get those to tier 20s. The only thing that's changed in our gear is we're trying to get ourselves a prismatic gaze. These are not super uncommon. They are an uncommon drop, random world uncommon drop, which means it shouldn't be too hard to get them. I had a really tough time getting mine because RNG is what RNG is. You might get yours very early. You might, it might take you a long time. It's not the end of the world if you don't have this. You just can't cap your crit without it. You'll also need an eagle wing to, cra uh, to uh, cap your crit. This is, should be much easier to get. Um, so between the two of these, if you can get them both to 4% crit, you can actually ca uh, cap your crit. Without that, you're going to be short or you're going to just have to put a ton of crit chance on, which is not ideal. So this is your kind of goal here is trying to get yourself an eagle wing and try to get a prismatic gaze both at 4% and then um, get your eagle wing with good affixes on it. So crit strike chance, fizz damage. If you got crit multi instead of fizz damage, those are almost as good. They're just about interchangeable. So you can go with either one of those chill and slow on hit. End game gear, we are, oh, actually, before we go to their advanced, let's talk about the, the idols real quick. We already talked about the adorned one with chance to cast smite when you hit with throwing attacks. Let's talk about the large ones. We want throwing attack, crit multi, and chance to shred armor on hit with throwing attacks or block effect, as we're looking for here. We'll talk about these both more when we get to the idol section, but this is what you're looking for. End game, things are mostly the same here. We're pushing up into exalted. Uh, we're trying to get some LP on stuff, throwing damage, um, frailty where we can get it. Also, if we get it on the Bleeding Heart, great. If not, get that on the uh, the uh, Relic. We are pushing up our, um, forgetting the name of the axe here, our Eagle Wing, trying to get that even stronger, maybe get some Sealed Shred on it, get Exalted Crit Strike Chance. We're pushing up our throwing damage, our throwing attack speed are both really important stats for our um our damage as is shred make sure we have a source of shred at this point on something if we have it on both our axe and on our gloves that is ideal we are pushing to get a plus three or plus four to hammer throw on our relic as well and we are hopefully getting a bastion of honor and re if we're really lucky we're going to get one with with legendary potential this is not it's not impossible at all to get one with, with legendary potential it happens fairly it's fairly common in the community to see one with, with legendary potential however for any one person going it's pretty hard and then to get block effectiveness on it would be even better uh if you don't have that though not the end of the world i don't have that i just have a bastion and that's fine in fact i made this build without a bastion got it afterwards so it works even without a bastion but once you get a bastion it's even better block effectiveness is the ideal um chance or uh reduced damage taken on block is the second best option and then block chance is the third best I guess you could go with health or all res after that, but really you want one of those three. Uh, as far as the prismatic gaze, we get an LP on that with throwing attack crit, uh, uh, crit strike chance. That's amazing. The crit strike chance we can get on the Sentinel body armor and the helmet are incredible. It'll obviously be much harder to get it on the as a legendary for the prismatic gaze, but it's not that hard to get it on the body armor. Uh, prioritize this over damage with hammer throw if you get damage with hammer throw on it as well great uh, health and increased health are really good armor shred effects also really good here 
okay um, make sure to get cleanse at some point on your belt you're gonna definitely want that health and health in the bottom mana regen is the only place we actually stack mana regen on here and it does make it a lot smoother so if you can get mana regen here great throwing damage as well as far as bits goes it's going to be very similar to what we were looking at before and then end game gear you're going to be looking for tier sevens now trying to seal the uh, uh tier fours if you can uh if you can get a 2 lp bastion of honor more power to you it's amazing you, it's gonna be really really hard to get one of these but it's possible so we do have it here just in case and a 3 lp bleeding heart is definitely possible to get so um you can keep farming for this and trying to look for it and same thing with prismatic gaze it's possible to get a 2 lp if you do and you get increased health on it and throwing strike crit chance you've got an amazing item any of these items if you have any of these or anything remotely close to these you have insanely good items congratulations they're not impossible but they're very difficult to get this is definitely chase items okay let's move on to blessings so we're not going to go too much into the drop rate blessings we'll cover them just just quickly but i want to cover the empowered combat blessings a bit the spell each one from grand wrath of Rhea, this is uh off the Rhea timeline is a very big part of your sustain if you have bleeding heart that's great if you have this as well that's amazing so i played this with just the blessing and not bleeding heart and with bleeding heart and i definitely think it's better with bleeding heart because the sustain is so good and so fast so i do recommend having both of these but you need to have at least one or the other either have the leech from blessing or amulet but preferably both next up we've got a uh, grand crash of waves this is off of lagon this is like the last one you're going to worry about but it's a nice little um buff to your cc if you get shock here too that's not bad stun increased stun chance is just a more immediate effect on smaller enemies than shock which needs to build up but either one of those is really good next up we got grand survival of might this is off of the reign of dragons this is for critical strike avoidance you're going to want this to, to crit caps so you're definitely going to prioritize this fairly early in the process we've got armor from grand body of ascinian this is um this should be the fire one. I always get these two mixed up. I get the, the, the um, yeah, this is the fire one. This is the, the three shamans. So uh, a huge, huge upgrade to your armor. Very good, very good blessing to have. And then as far as this one here, which is the uh, the deer, I always forget his name, freaking um, Herot. This is from Herot. This is like a flex slot, we'll call it. It's a, it's a flex area where you can do really two different things. Grand Fury of the North is going to give you 20% damage against bosses. It can give you potentially more against non-bosses, but they usually die before it even matters. So this is more for, for bossing. If you'd rather be more defensive, you can take Grand Bulwark of the Tundra. That is confusing. That is actually the wrong one. This should be the... Um, this is the block. Block effectiveness one. This I will update this in the actual guide so this should be the block effectiveness one not grand blower with the tundra and that will give you a ton of value with bastion of honor if you if you get that so um highly highly recommend depending on whichever needs you have either go block effectiveness or go shred which one you want is really personal preference because they're both really good it's really do you want to do more damage do you want to take less damage you can you can go either way um all right next up let's talk about the drop rate blessings drop rate blessings are tend to be a lot less important in the game right now but there are some that can can help you kind of move your farming along like grand mark of agony for adorned if you need the adorned ray idol uh with chance to chance to cast smite on throwing attack if you've got that taken care of though you can do um side of the outcast this should be grand for the other idols you have the large ones that will allow you to help you to get those um going as well those have like uh crit multi on them or so they're really good crit multi for throwing attacks grand slumber of morty does for the relic trying to get your level of hammer throw um up to you know tier six tier seven this will help out with that grand binds of sanctuary can help you find a uh, a shield to put on an lp version of um uh bastion of honor and grand vision of aura can help you to find more amulets to put on bleeding heart Grand Scars of Blood to help you find eagle, eagle Wings. This can actually be pretty valuable if you're struggling to find Eagle Wings. This one could actually have some... some I mean, all, for all these can have some value, but this one could be especially valuable if you're struggling to find a good Eagle, eagle Wing. And then uh, the last ones here are... Take them if you want, but they're skippable. Grand Ma uh, Memory of the Mastery is Grand Hope of the Being. Neither of these slots have anything super useful. Okay, let's move on to Idols. We have the one adorned Rhea idol we talked about with cast smite on hit. And then you can put in here health or block effectiveness. Either one is good. 
Large Raya Idols is going to be all crit multi on the prefix. Very strong if you get four of these. It's almost 100% crit multi if you get them all maxed out. And then this, the suffixes have flex. They can be chance of straight armor or throwing hits or block effectiveness. Um, you want to have probably at least like 150 to 200 or so shred armor. So once you've gotten that, you can then just do the rest for block effectiveness. And then the other two slots can be uh, double health or for resistances, we have fire resistance built into our planner here and your gear will differ. So which one you put there will be determined upon which resistances you need. Same goes for here. If you don't need any resistances, go do a double health. Otherwise you can put resistance on the uh, suffix, but the 5% increased health is great. So definitely take that. All right, let's talk about build scaling and end game. So we'll start with damage for the build scaling. We're going to do throwing attack speed to scale super well with that. Flat throwing scales super well with that as well. Strength is great because it has increased damage along with armor. So you can get a double benefit there. Crit strike chance is great, especially if you have eagle wing and prismatic gaze. If you don't have either of those, don't worry about this yet. Wait until you start to get some base crit before you start to scale your crit chance or else you're going to get a lot less value out of it. Crit multi, once you have high crit chance, is excellent. If you don't have high crit chance, it's not so good anymore, or yet. So light crit chance, start to scale that once your crit is hot, getting higher. Um, increased damage, we get mostly from our passive trees, buffs, and strengths. So we don't really need it on our gear, but you can put some on as a bonus if you'd like. We already talked about sigils and volatile reversals value. Level of hammer throws a big damage to our uh, boost to our damage because we get more multipliers to invest in. So that's a really good thing to have. Uh, we talked about Grand Fear of the North in the uh, the Blessings uh, section, 20% for bosses or take block effectiveness up to you. And Armor Shred is huge, so we definitely want to have 150 to 200 or so block uh, Armor Shred at the, uh, at the deep end game. We're going to shred a lot because we hit three times per cast, so we don't need a ton, but the more you have, the easier it is to get it to uh, be like effectively capped out. There's not a true cap in Armor Shred, but it's got a, it's a huge diminishing returns. As far as defense goes, block chance before you have Bastion of Honor is great. Even some block chance when you have it is good. Block effectiveness is excellent, once you have, especially when you have Bastion of Honor. But at any point, you definitely want a lot of this. Um, Grand Bones Eternity is the blessing I was talking about for block effectiveness that uh, you can you can farm off of uh, Herot. So if you don't want the Shred, go for that. Endurance is awesome on just about every build. This one is especially true. Um, it's, in fact, it's especially true for just about any Sentinel right now because you can get that extra endurance threshold from Sigils for basically free just by casting Sigils. So we want to cap that out for sure. We talked about strength already with armor um, and the armor mitigation that we can get. This actually needs to be changed. Sigils of Hope does not give you armor mitigation anymore. It does um, endurance thresholds. Another one I'll switch out. As far as health, we can we can surpass 3,000 health with this, and that's really good to do. So we definitely want to push our health up. Remember, by the time you're at Empowered, you want to have about 2,000 or more, and then keep stacking from there. This build has amazing leech if you get both Bleeding Heart and Grand Wrath of Rhea, especially if they're both well rolled. So you'll have no problem with sustain. You just need to make sure to get those taken care of, Bleeding Heart, especially early on. Chill and Slow are excellent for this build because we can... Uh, kite enemies a lot easier and she will cause them to, to attack less quickly which is great it'll also cause um, telegraphed attacks to be more slow which is amazing on bosses it gives you more time to react frailty causes a reduction in damage frailty is probably one of the most underrated things for new players that they just chill as well but they just don't realize just how powerful these are like six six uh percent reduced damage with three stacks it is multiplicative so it's not quite 18 percent, but it's like 16 point something percent reduced damage for literally one suffix is incredible value the same thing with chill where it's like um somewhere around 30 percent reduction in attack speed that that's just incredible value so do not skimp on these if you see these prioritize them and ward or excuse me an ailment cleansing as well is very valuable for removing dots from your um from your your character uh, and preventing yourself from dying that way. All right, let's we're finished up. We're almost at a half an hour. Let's finish up at recommended end game activities. Uh, Monolith is kind of where this thing is the best. It is a very good farmer. It is quite fast because of shield rush. It has great clear. It has great single target. So it's good on bosses. It doesn't really have anything it struggles with in the monolith. This is pretty much built for a monolith. So if you're looking for a good monolith all around her. That also doesn't require a ton of investment to get going. In fact, this requires very little to get started. This is a good build for you.
as far as dungeons go it's pretty good it uh, has that, that good single target damage so it can do well on the bosses as far as making sure that the fights don't take too terribly long because tier four bosses are a pain in the butt and you need to be on your toes constantly so the longer you need to be on your toes the better it's very good throughout the actual dungeons i was actually farming tier four the the um the dungeon the maps not the boss on temporal sanctum to get some exalted a while back and it was very smooth it's very good at it that was without bastion i believe i can't remember if i'd bastion at that point either way it was very smooth the only areas that you have to really worry about are with the bosses and this is true for just about any build um the jora fight can be a little bit more difficult because it wants to be close and she'll stand in a bunch of stuff but it doesn't need to be close so it's actually not that big of a problem you can hit her from farther away and like any sentinel build you can cheese it with rebuke to deal with some of the bigger attacks if you can time it well uh the soulfire bastion is especially important in because we don't have a good iframe option for some of his abilities that are otherwise undodgeable or unavoidable so bear that in mind if you want to use soulfire bastion it's just a pain in the butt fight for basically every sentinel right now but it's definitely doable especially with rebuke all right and endless arena this is a good build for endless arena like it'll do well i don't recommend it though not in this form because if you were to take um i think it's called enra's technique you do better enra's technique is a, a node in hammer throw that causes it to do uh, a nova instead of a spiral so you can hit enemies from much further away that's much better for arena this will be a good arena build though like it, it is actually a solid reasonably well tiered arena build because you still can hit enemies from far away and shotgun them with this build it's got decent tankiness there's just another hammer throw build that'll do it better so i would recommend if you're trying to push arena, like if your goal with the build is to push arena then you do something with enra's technique but if your goal is to do monolith and dungeons you like to do arena every once in a while this is going to do well on it so you can you can definitely do that okay that is everything for the build but again we have or as always we have a loot filter for you available just go right through here you can either right click save link as or you can click and open it up and you'll get a code you'll just get a bunch of like html code or xml code control a and then uh, paste that into your filter and you're good to go uh yeah if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments or hang out in the Amazon discord or check out my stream and i'd be happy to answer them for you i hope you all enjoy this build i hope you all have a great time in last epoch and i will see you all again real soon